Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines, and today I'm going to show you how to sew a simple pamphlet, stitch, sketchbook, or journal. I'm going to go through a few different methods for both three hole and five hole journals, and I'll be covering them with old paper artworks from my collection. You can use absolutely any type of paper you want to to make your journal. If you're using a large 56 by 76 centimetre piece of art paper like I am, it's good to check the grain of the paper before you tear it down to size, as your book will be a bit easier to fold and just more structurally sound if you fold the spine in the same direction that the grain runs. To check the direction of the grain, bend the paper lightly in half in each direction. You'll see which way the grain runs when you bend it and it's got less bounce and settles a bit more easily. When you know which way your grain runs, you'll be able to figure out the most suitable way to tear your paper. If you want to, you can measure out your paper so that you end up with a specific book size, but I find it easier and quicker to just work with the size of the paper that I'm using. To tear my paper, I bend it lightly and I make some little pinch folds where I want to tear it, and then I line up a steel ruler to those and make my tears. You could cut your paper with a blade if you really want to, but I find that a torn edge looks nicer and is a bit more forgiving for this kind of book. For my particular sheet of paper, I'm tearing it in half along the short edge, then tearing the resulting strips in half again, so that I'll be left with four thin strips of paper. When I have my four strips, I'll tear these once more in the opposite direction, so that I end up with eight equally sized pieces. The paper that I'm using is a 250 gram Somerset printmaking paper, and because it's quite thick, I'm only using four of the sheets in each book. So this one sheet of paper torn down is enough for two small sketchbooks. While I'm making my final tears here, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. If you get some value out of what I make and you can afford to buy me the equivalent of one sheet of printmaking paper each month, that would be amazing. My plan is to make weekly art tutorial videos this year and every little bit of support helps me make these videos better. When your paper's all torn down to size, it's time to fold your signatures. With thick pieces of paper like these ones, I like to fold them in half one at a time using a bone folder to make the edge nice and crisp. If you don't have a bone folder, you can just make the edge as sharp as you can with your fingers. If you're folding lighter weight paper, you might be able to get away with folding multiple sheets together at once, but I recommend going slowly and folding one at a time. A signature is the name for a single section of pages in a book. The pamphlet stitch books that we're making today are single signature books, meaning they just have one section of pages inside. Pamphlet stitch isn't really suitable for thicker books with multiple signatures. Depending on the thickness of your paper, it's best to stick to signatures made from four to eight sheets of paper. These pages are for my three hole book, so here I'm marking out my holes in the spine of one of the sheets of paper. I like to make one hole in the centre, then one hole at the bottom about three centimetres in, and another at the top about three centimetres in. Once I've lightly marked the spots for the holes with my awl, I gather the whole signature together and carefully poke the awl through the whole stack at the same time. I'm making the covers for my book from old prints that I've made in the past, so when I found a piece of artwork that was roughly the correct size, I measured it against the signature and tore it down to a size just slightly larger than the pages of the book. Again, I used one of the sheets from the signature to mark out the holes in the spine so that everything will line up when it's time to sew the book together.
Back when I worked in an art supply shop, people would come in thinking that they had to use a very specific type of thread to sew their books together. While linen thread is traditional and pretty strong, you really can use any kind of thread you want to. Although try to avoid any thread that's too fine as it will break more easily. Today I'm using a cotton thread cut to a length just over two times the height of my book. Waxed thread will be less likely to tangle and is a bit easier to work with, but again, it doesn't matter too much. If you've got some beeswax or a beeswax candle handy, you can run your thread through it a few times to coat it. I sew my pamphlet stitch books from the inside out, starting with the centre hole. I take my threaded needle through the centre hole to the outside, leaving a decent tail of thread on the inside of the book. From there, I move down to the bottom hole on the outside of the book, and I bring the thread back through to the inside of the book. Some people find it easier to clamp their books together with bulldog clips before making their holes in the spine, so that it's a bit easier to line everything up and sew. I tend not to work that way, but give it a go if you think it will make things easier for you. When you have your thread back on the inside of the book, skip across the entire centre hole and take your needle back to the outside of the book through the top hole. Finish off the sewing by coming back through the centre hole from the outside to the inside. Before you tie your final knot, make sure that your two thread ends are hanging to either side of the sewn thread in the centre. Pull everything taut by pulling the thread parallel with your spine, and then tie those two ends together around the sewn thread using a square knot. You can tuck your knot and your thread ends in if you want to. I like to trim mine lightly with a generous amount of thread left over, and I just leave them hanging in the centre page of the book.
If you're making a larger book, you might want to use the five hole binding method so that everything is a bit more secure. Follow all the same steps as the three hole method for preparing your paper. Then make five evenly spaced holes with your awl along the spine of the book. There are a few different ways that you can sew this together and I'm going to start with my preferred method. Like with the three hole book, you start by taking the thread from the inside to the outside of the book through the centre hole, leaving a generous tail of thread. Instead of going back through the bottom hole, go back in through the next hole down, which should be the second hole from the bottom. When you have the thread back inside the book, take it out again through the bottom hole. Now it's time to turn it around and move gradually up the book. Bring the thread back through the second to bottom hole once more and to the inside of the book. Go back out through the centre hole, being careful not to split the thread that you've already sewn with your needle. Come back inside at the second to top hole and then take the thread back to the outside through the top hole. Come back inside again through the second to top hole and instead of going back outside the book at this point through the centre hole, just loop your needle and thread through the next stitch down, making sure that all your stitches are taut and tie your ends together with a square knot.
Another way that you can sew a five hole pamphlet book together that I'm gonna show you here is to use two shorter threads using exactly the same method that we used for the three hole book, but repeating it twice. There's no one way to sew any book together, so please experiment and have fun with it. And that's how you make both three and five hole pamphlet stitch books. If you're watching this video in February 2021, don't forget that you've still got time to enter my art telephone challenge. I'll link that video and the entry form in the description to this video. There's still several weeks left for you to enter and make something fun. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. If you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I've used in the description and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook, Instagram and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.